Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Pastor David, it's good seeing you. Hey, John. I want to just uh, welcome you guys. for Thank you for joining us. Pastor, I got a, a, a question from a somebody who attends our church. I want to read it. It says, hey, my brother, just a thought. I wonder how many people in our church don't know or forget or didn't hear the study in John of what the wheat means for our church. Would this be a good question for Pastor and Unfiltered? And we have the wheat logo that we have on our uh, timeline wall. Uh, we have stickers of it at our bookstore. And so, yeah, that's a good question, Pastor. What does the wheat mean, and why did, why did you choose the wheat logo for our church? You know, when we first began our church, and we'll be celebrating 42 years on a Wednesday night in July, so, you know, that might be something to talk about even on that night because mm. we're going to have a different kind of, uh, of uh, service, which... You know, we plan on having some throwback worship and all, and and maybe some pictures and things to go along with that, as well as just a Q and A kind of an interview thing, just to celebrate 42 years. But when we first began, we had, um, you know, we we had to in order to receive incorporation at that time. I don't know if it's still the same way now, John, but you had to provide proof that you were actually uh, a congregation that was meeting. You had to have. Proof and part of the proof when you incorporated at that time was that you had a uh, a bulletin of some sort to evidence that. And so from the very beginning, and we do have a uh, a facsimile of our first bulletin that's uh, in our hall of uh, ministry history here at the church. In um, the very first service we ever had, we had a little bulletin that was hand drawn and. Uh, it had a wheat logo because Jesus said, look on the fields, they're white for harvest. And so from the very beginning, I wanted our people to have a, an awareness that, that um, there are people in the world that are awaiting the message of the gospel and that the, the, the fields are ready. They're ripe and even in danger of over ripening and so I wanted our people to know that we had a, a vision to reach the lost. Healthy sheep beget sheep. So because we wanted to uh, spend time teaching the word and building foundations, we developed the, uh, the wheat logo as a representative of the fields. And Jesus in order to inspire his men, said, look upon the fields. So I wanted our church to have eyes to see mm. that there's a whole world that is lost in need of the gospel. And so that's how we began using the wheat logo. And we've had it uh, in various iterations over the years. And uh, it became the, uh, the symbol of this church. And you can see how it's... Uh, uh, for the first bulletin, you can see it on the timeline, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. It's just the wheat and then it's evolved or it's changed yeah, into it's changed. the sticker that we have. That mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. It's just a wheat sticker. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, on the way into the office this morning, I saw two of the wheat logos on the on our car that was passing. And We're probably going to a different church. Now. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, they sped by. No. <laughs> yeah, they won't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, as the wheat is important because it produces, it's a harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, was that something that you came up with, or was it on the drawing? Well, everything or? you do, you came up with, right? So you'd like to claim that you did, but in fact, I think that was inspired in my in my particular case um, by just the, the scripture. And uh, yeah, we 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 wanted a bulletin cover and. That scripture was important and remains important to me. So, you know, at the beginning, like I said, it was actually, and there's a bigger story than the one I'm giving, but there was actually uh, an image that had been produced that I thought looked like a, like a, um, a silhouette of the Lord, and we put within that a wheat field. Because I believe that Jesus, uh, even in the Old Testament, you see something similar, but in the New Testament, that Jesus used visuals sometimes to illustrate to the his men uh, where his heart was. Like in the Old Testament, um, Abraham was told uh, to look at the stars and count the mm -hmm. sand. So that would give to him the sense of the immensity 
of um, what was before him. And with Jesus, he pointed to the fields and he said, look upon the fields for their white for harvest. And in the particular context of that, there are commentators who point out that there were people who were walking away and then people who were surrounding him. And so there are people wearing white, you know, and so it was a picture of these human beings, these human beings, that's your field. And you need to realize that these human beings are in need of, of receiving life. And so look upon the fields because they're ripe, they're ready, and even overripe. And so, yeah, so we, we've always had a, a heart for evangelism in the sense that my messages always contain evangelistic aspects because you preach and you teach. And so as a symbol uh, of our church, that's how it developed. I like it, and I like, I like the one that we had the, the, well, there's different colors. You guys got to go check out our timeline. Yeah, you can it's do in that. the hallway, and you'll see the different, even the different shades and the colors of it. You know, and I want to close with this, Pastor, is, is yes, there is a harvest for, for a people out there that are needing to hear the gospel. Is there also a harvest within the church? Because I think sometimes we can be sometimes caught up in being here at church and not realizing that the person next to us. It wouldn't be used. I wouldn't use that as an exact... Um, you know, correlation. I, I believe there's always a potential for harvest in the sense that there can be fruit that is produced and all. And so I, I could I could see it in that way. But for me, it was more, John. It was more of a of a picture of the lost. Mm -hmm. It was more of a picture of reaching out to the people who are outside the four walls. Because one of the things that that churches can be very um, guilty of doing is is focusing their attention on simply reaching those within. We have to realize that we're equipped for work of ministry and that we should be stepping out. We'll be, as a matter of fact, this, uh, this Sunday. I'm, I'm about to conclude my preparation for Sunday, but that's the whole point I'm going to be introducing Sunday service with because the day of Pentecost arrived, Peter preached, the practice of the church began to become formulated, and then one day they're out there, these apostles, uh, Peter and John, are at the uh, gate called Beautiful in the temple, and you see God moving beyond the four walls in a very graphic illustration because I really want the people in our church to have a heart to, to give away their faith and to, to see people in need. And so, you know, for those who would like to, I invite you to be part of it on Sunday and we'll be looking at that. Amen. And that's at 8.30 and 10.45. That's Come right. out and join us as we have a time of worship and then we're in God's Word and, and being in fellowship with Amen. one another. Pastor, thank you so much. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. You can always check out our timeline that's on the in the hallways of our church here. You can see the the wheat logo and where it, the oh, initials okay. and how it's come down even up into our time today. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you guys so much. We love you and God bless you. Amen.